Good afternoon and welcome to the Ecomos Malaysia and Architects webinar series. Today we will invite uh, Datin Architect June to share with us some of her experience in the art and science of conservation. But before that, I, as the president of Ecomos Malaysia, would like to do a bit of sales pitch on Ecomos. Now, Ecomos on the international level, and it stands for Eco International Council on Monument and Sites. It was actually pro the foundation of Ecomos was actually proposed by UNESCO at a, at, at a conference in Venice in 1964. And then subsequently, Ecomos was formed in 1965. And together with ECOM, which is the which is the International Council of Museums, and ECROM, which is the which is a scientific uh, NGO linked both basically to uh, state authorities as well for conservation of buildings. And ECOMOS are the three advisory bodies to UNESCO and the World Heritage Office and the World Heritage uh, Center. ECOMOS is basically a network of interdisciplinary experts and supported entirely by membership. There is no governmental support at all. Now, the facts and figures, there are about 10,500 in individual members in 151 countries. There are 248 institutional members. There are 108 national committees, 28 international scientific committees, and growing again. And, and these scientific committees basically are the platforms where the experts share their views and their expertise. And then at the, at the annual uh, scientific symposium, all these, all these different skills come together and, and, and merge together. The, there's an emerging professional working group meant to sustain and, and build up capacity among the younger members of ECOMOS. ECOMOS also maintain an open archive which is uh, basically open to everybody, uh, including non-members. And of course, there's a webinar series, which non-members have to pay, but, not, but, it, but members usually goes free or on, on, a, on a subsidized rate. Now, the, the, these, are the, these are the membership benefits that, that comes with being a member of e-commerce. But most importantly, I think we are members of e-commerce are actually part of an international professional network and can participate in expert meetings, which what, uh, which what I mentioned earlier, uh, that the international scientific committees and the scientific symposiums that were held annually are uh, about. Professional workshops, which are held to get, uh, around, the, around the year. Scientific exchanges, site inspections, training programs all over the world. Right now, a few of our members are actually participating in HIA uh, HIA preparation in, in Shanghai, albeit it is uh, online, training programs locally as well as uh, abroad. And the, I, that, I, to my mind, is the most important aspect of being able, of joining e-commerce. The rest of the, the rest, the rest of the, of the benefits are, are actually incidental rather than anything else. And, but most attractive to many members is the ability to visit many of the heritage sites, including some of the significant buildings in Italy, France, for free, and also be able to jump queue because of the e-commerce membership card. E-commerce Malaysia was established in 2012 as the 101st National Committee of e-commerce, and we were registered officially in this country in 2013. Now, as of October 20, uh, 2021, we have 122 members comprising of 84 individual members, one institutional member, two young professional, 34 associate member, and one student member. We have scientific, national scientific committees which mirror the international scientific committees, and we engage in our own, own series of discussions and, uh, and, sh and knowledge sharing on a, on a, on a regular basis. We also uh, try to try to encourage young professional and in a young prof emerging professional working group. Now, if you have any membership inquiries, please email us at the at the at the email indicated there. Now, today's uh, e-commerce Malaysia at Architects. Today's uh, today's the series of uh, the series of two 
uh, talks that uh, that is being sponsored by architects is he said has been entitled the siren of the old and sustenance of the present uh, basically it's about memories of spa places and spaces and how they leave an impression on mankind and then at, in the past or at the present heritage is timeless for any legacy to be significant its existence must be told and be retold in a continuum culturally appropriate and maintain relevance it is a narrative i think that will need to be revisit and revisited again and again thus sustaining legacies present in the current times should be an integral part of our culture as the past are windows to the lessons of the future and today we are going to we are going uh, we are going to have our very own Datin architect Jun Ng, uh, who is a who is an expert member of JWN and also a registered conservator, a registered architect, a member of the Institute of Interior Designers, and of course, a member of Ecomos Malaysia. Jun is going to share with us the art and science of sustaining historic sites, and I have uh, heard him I heard us speak on several occasions. I'm, I'm sure you will be, uh, be you, will, you will thoroughly enjoy this session together. Jun, can, please come on. Thank you, thank Mr. You. President. Hi, thank uh, you for addressing me as such. Okay, no, Jun, I, your time I, now. It's, your, it's your time now. Please share with us right. your, your expertise. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen now. Okay. Um, all right, can everybody see? Can you see my screen? Uh, can you see my screen? All right. Okay. A very good day. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. President, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Architect Yun. I am an architect and also a heritage architect uh, practicing in Kuala, uh, sorry. Practicing, uh, my office is in Petaling Jaya, so actually practicing in, in, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, a very good day to all. First of all, I would like to thank ECOMOS, Malaysia, PEM, and Architects 2021 for give, inviting me to speak on this forum uh, on the theme of the siren of the old and the sustenance of the present. The topic I will be sharing in my presentation today will be the art and science of sustaining historic sites, as it is an important framework to safeguard the heritage value of our community. Uh, here's my title, just read. Okay, my first slide here. Um, the Chang Institute of Art defined art and science are naturally overlap. Both are means of investigation. Both involves idea theories and hypotheses that are tested in places where mind and hand comes together, the laboratory and studio. Artists like scientists study material, people, culture, history, religion, mythology, and learn to transform information into something else. In ancient Greece, the word for art was technique, from which technique and technology are derived. Terms that are really applied to both scientific and artistic practice. And this definition is actually very similar like the conservation uh, practice today. Not today, I mean, has been going on huh, for a long time. Okay, um, the art and science of conservation is actually through the approach and process of maintenance, preservation, restoration, reconstruction, adaptive reuse. Um, we look at picture, we look at the picture one and two. Okay, this, this kind of approach, uh, uh, it, it, doesn't, it, it can be combined. It can be combined a maintenance and preservation, or it can be preservation and restoration. Um, uh, the, the definition of each of them can be referred at this uh, the, the National Heritage Act uh, 645 is uh, very clearly stated uh, the Bar Charter and other uh, heritage guidelines uh, uh, in the world. Okay, um, picture one is it, it was a project that we restore the, the, the main the grand stairs of Manji uh, Picture two after the conservation and then that, that comprised of preservation and restoration. And then if you look at picture four, five, six, these are also the, some of the exercises that we have done uh, uh, involve preservation and restoration. 
And picture three is actually adaptive reuse. I uh, meaning we change the use of uh, of the building used to be townhouse, uh, sorry, shop house, and now it has been adapted to a restaurant. And picture three is uh, uh, is is preservation. Uh, uh, the, this is uh, one one of this artwork uh, that needs the preservation. So where the science comes in, uh, okay, the role of science in conservation is actually through investigative uh, method. Uh, uh, you need confirmation. Uh, uh, you need to investigate uh, what causes the defect, uh, and then usually it's uh, non-destructive survey, defect monitoring, environmental monitoring, sample analytical methods, sophisticated analytical method. Okay, between the difference between a sample analytical method and sophisticated. Sophisticated meaning you are like, for example, you are taking uh, 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 this uh, petrography test. Uh, um, uh, sort test uh, is a very very sophisticated uh, analytical method, and then you need scientists to analyze uh, your 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 findings. So some pictures. Uh, uh, we we when when we did uh, conservation for the Parliament House of Sub Panel, uh, we had to call the the take the core sample, um, and then from the core sample we we cut a slide very thin slice uh, of the of the core to to. For the petrography test and also we also uh test the strength as well and then the petrography was main, mainly to find the the, the 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 mixture to come the form the, the exact mineral that was made yeah, for the for the panel so we, we did a sample and the, the one of the picture on the right you can see and then uh, for example like non-destructive tests like moisture meter uh, you see the picture second picture from the left uh, you, even though you see the the surface is very dry but you can see the meter is is on the red uh, side. Well, it's because water, moisture, not water. I mean, moisture is trapped uh, in the in the in the in the brick wall. When you can see the pointing, all the pointings are, are, are done in cement, so it traps the moisture. So Bertrand Fielden, he's a conservation architect. In his book, uh, he he mentioned conservation uh, may take up to sixteen consultants uh, from different uh, disciplinaries uh, uh, to to come together to work on the project. So conservation is not a project that it, it, it's like a one-man show. Huh? It, it, it needs a team of, huh? of, of consultants, depending on the type of project. Okay, what is conservation? Conservation is, 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 is a big word, actually. Huh? Uh, uh, but in general, it is a process of prolonging the life of buildings, monuments, and objects with significant value as so to retain its authenticity and integrity. Why conservation? Conservation is, is very beneficial to our, our community because it helps to promote uh, the heritage value of a place, community, the city. It also enhances our identity, social, cultural, and economic life of a city, a beneficial strategy of urban management and development. And then in Malaysia, the conservation process uh, and framework uh, is governed by the National Heritage Act and and the uh, National Heritage, uh, Heritage also uh, have a guideline uh, uh, on heritage building conservation uh, and and conservation management management plan. And then in this framework, uh, this 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 slide is to, to tie up how how the architect the the architects uh, 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 minimum uh, services the stages of minimum services from the planning to issuance of the CCC when upon completion. So they, they are kind of they are kind of uh, overlap. That's why it, sometimes uh, conservation is also uh, 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 architects can also be a I mean architect practice uh, conservation. I'm sorry, conservators conservators are also called uh, uh, architect conservation. Uh, architect conservator. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> okay, let's look at the overview of current conservation trend. I'd like to show some some of the current trend, the practice uh, of conservation, uh, mainly uh, sharing some somewhat of, of my 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 observation in 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 Tao and many parts of Malaysia, uh, and 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 I'm sharing this this particular topic mainly uh, on shop houses. Uh, why? Because uh, shop houses form the largest historic built heritage inventory in the country. And they are under threats every day. So uh, let's let's look at what what is the current trend. Whether the work done are they in the, is the I mean is the intervention reversible or not? 
is the method of conservation prolonging the life of the building is the authenticity and integrity respected huh? Uh, the, the, the whole of the building the form of the building the original uh, fabric of the building uh, are they respected and what is the way forward okay let's look at uh, this uh, this slide here uh, this street art uh, well uh, street art it does actually I, I appreciate street art I think it does enhance the street skate uh, and it gives it a good, a very good vibes uh, I mean especially to the younger generation uh, um, and uh, however, I think uh, certain things that we may want to uh, uh, to, to consider or, or understand or revisit, uh, uh, you know, uh, what 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 this what is the perp I mean, beside beautification, uh, have we? I mean, we need we also need to consider, you know, will, will that harm our our heritage building, or what is what is a a, a, a group a well, whether this artwork is how much are we going to do? Huh? For example, the picture on one and two, one picture one is before the paint, uh, picture two is after the paint. Um, I, I uh, the the paint, it, it's a beautiful painting. Uh. I think the artist is very creative, uh, brilliant, um, very nice uh, work. I I seen it actually. I walk very closely to it, and then um, and then uh, picture three is also another street art in Kuala Lumpur. And then picture four and five is the famous uh, uh, street art in Penang uh, by this uh, Lithuanian artist. Um, I, 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 from my observation, I think um, perhaps the certain things we need to consider is a human scale uh, when we put in this kind of street art. Uh, the human scale we need to consider uh, 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 the material, and then whether the artwork is going to be overpowering our heritage building. Um, I, I think picture two is a little bit overpowering our heritage. Uh, I mean, the, our building, I, I think com comparing to the picture one, I, I, it, it overpowers the architecture significant. Uh, uh, that, that, that was my observation when I first saw it. Yeah? Uh, so, so a few things that I just mentioned, uh, we, we may want to consider uh, this kind of intervention to our heritage building. Like I said, it does uh, give a good vibe. Uh, to, to, to the to the street skate definitely it does okay next is another trend i mean the the another conservation trend today um i also noted that i think people or people likes to 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 strip off all the plasters of the building uh external in uh, in interior uh to expose uh, the, the the brick i i think yeah it, it's nice to look at the brick because you can appreciate for example the picture on the right you can see the arch huh? how 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 brick was used to make this this arch structure this is just amazing um and then um and also you can see the the brick laying huh? the bond huh? what kind of bond are we are they using in the past uh today the the bond that we use and what they have you they had used in the past are actually different uh if you go and see see it closely uh, in, in the past, they, they use this Flemish bond uh, where they will they 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 will, they, they will have one row of a header, the short side, and then one row of the stretcher, and then another row of the header, and then it repeats. But today is is a, a stretcher header, stretcher header, stretcher header. So so the bond laying is different. So um we we, we this oh, this is definitely confirming that oh yeah this is an old building uh, the, the way the the, the bond the the brick laying bond. But however, I, I think um, another thing uh, we need to consider when we rip off all the plaster of the building, um, it is about this uh, weather, huh? the environment, whether it is you know it it, it will be harmful huh? to to the to the to the wall because uh, these these buildings they are not built on uh, reinforced concrete they they are built on load bearing wall system where where every piece of brick huh? is, is is it forms part of the structure of, of of, of the wall and the, the system the, the load bearing wall system therefore uh, the plaster was made there to to protect it and in the olden days they used lime plaster which is a uh, which is breathable uh, not cement that's why you know our building this old, old shop houses are standing more than 100 years today uh, we owe it to the, 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 the technique the system of construction and the method the method that was used then and for example if this walls were to be plastered with cement, I don't think we, we can easily just remove the plaster 
and it, it would definitely damage the brick. So uh, uh, this is um, this is what I saw. Uh, perhaps certain care, maybe I think maybe uh, as this is a trend, perhaps maybe after a short uh, time, a couple of years, perhaps you know, owners may want to plaster them all back uh, to 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 protect the, the 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 skin of the building. Okay, that's another one. Uh, the current conservation trend. I think this is a very in, a very interesting place in Kuala Lumpur. Picture on the left is is uh, the original building before it was restored, and picture on the right after restoration. Um, okay, the 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 fact that the building uh, uh, it, it is adapted, uh, uh, renovated is already a, 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 a very good practice already. Yeah, compared to demolishing it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I uh, what what the the the, the group. The developer did was they remove the the old shutters. Huh? You, you look at the left picture on the upper floor. Huh? You can see the the old shutters. They remove it, and then they change it to the new timber louvered, huh? not shutters. Huh? And then they they but luckily they didn't throw away. They display on the wall, which is a nice thing to do. Um, but my comment here is that my my view my my point of view is that I think the carpentry skill of making timber shutters. Uh, it's very important. Huh? Uh, I, I think the, the carpenter, the old uncle, if we stop asking the, the carpenter, the old, old carpenter's uncle to, to, to fabricate uh, uh, timber shutters, and then the skill will not be passed to the younger generation. Everybody these days will just use a timber lure because you can just buy it off the shelf. And it, like our shoe cabinet doors, uh, it, it's that kind of thingy that you can just buy and then you just uh, uh, fix it, uh, buy it, get a timber frame and frame it around. So I, I think uh, perhaps this is uh, a very important uh, point that I, I would like to address. Put our window, window shutters back. Huh? We want to tell the next generation, shutters were the early windows. Huh? Before glass came in, before steel came in, you will see all the shutters. And after that, when glass uh, glass in, was introduced, steel was introduced, and then you, you the shutters, uh, uh, some of them, they still remain and some of them, were, were, were being replaced, uh, depending on the pocket uh, of the owners, uh, because this eventually, I mean, glass and steel uh, were more expensive material at the time. And, and, and these windows are constructed, the way they were constructed, the window frame, the timber frame, they were all anchored onto the wall. Uh, the second picture on the left bottom, uh, they anchored on the wall. It's a very brilliant way of construction. Okay, um, and then this is another trend again, uh, like I just mentioned, it, it shutters turn into louvers, you know. And then on the left, it's actually the side elevation of the building on the front. And, and you, you, we look at, I, I, I love this building. It's very long. It's easily 100 feet. It has two bays uh, of, of the left picture. Yeah, the windows, uh, the, 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 the form is there, but the, the window leaf has been changed. Um, but somehow the language is, the language on the front, the, the front facade and the side facade, they are different, you know, uh, especially the second building on, on the left. Uh, suddenly there's a you know there's there's a there's a balcony so uh well i, I i'm not condemning all this this uh, creative design and designers uh, are doing i i appreciate what they are doing i, I think they have transformed uh, these buildings into a very interesting uh, architecture uh perhaps uh, however i i i have one one comment is that whatever you do make sure it's reversible uh, there's a principle of conservation is reversible okay after some time you, you don't like that okay please put it back uh, to where it was originally supposed to be therefore documentation is very important we need to document uh the the old buildings heritage buildings before we do any intervention documentation is one of the major principles in doing conservation projects okay um next i would like to show uh, the following on my slides like to show some shop house example uh, the, the 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 meaning of art and science of conservation, the process, the approach, uh, the detail. So basically, in the in, in, in the conservation project, we, we need to do a historical research. We need to do documentation. We need to find the statement of significance, and then if scientific testing. So that if we need uh, some confirmation, whether it's lime, whether it's plaster, uh, whether uh, the, the 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 chloride on the building, whether is it uh, uh, is it chloride or other kind of salt. Uh? And then we also have using we also use this principle of material salvaging. We don't throw away those old 
old bricks. Uh, we, 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 we can sell those that are good bricks, we can salvage them. And then we also do capacity building because we need to train, we need to share the knowledge, create awareness to the younger generation, especially uh, um, to also the builders, I mean, uh, especially the builders, because some a lot of builders are not familiar the low barrel wall system, they are not familiar with lime. Um, so actually conservation is, is very fun. And many developers tell me, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do conservation. Oh, it's very expensive. No, no, no. You know, it's not true. It's not true. It, it's, it's not true at all. Okay, let's just do a comparison. Okay, a bag of cement, the cost of a bag of cement, 200 uh, is 25 kg, is the same as a bag of lime. It's the same price, except the difference is five kilo, uh, is, is, is five kg. So we're talking about the wall plastering itself is only 20%. Uh, uh, and, and, and it, it's, it's a little bit more, but it's not like very, very expensive. What the, 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 what people have in mind, you know, a lot of developers are so afraid when they hear about conservation project, they just shy away. It's, it's not at all. It's basically, you're just preserving the building. You are maintaining, maintaining the building. Uh, you, you, you watertight the building. It's the same like uh, any normal modern building. Yeah? It's just the same. It's just a change of material uh, from cement uh, to lime, uh, which is, is, it's not difficult. It's easy. Okay, uh, like I said, uh, like the, uh, earlier, we, I, I, in my presentation, I would like to concentrate on the shop houses, as I mentioned just now. We have the largest uh, uh, historic, they are the largest inventory, uh, his, uh, built heritage inventory in our country. Okay, uh, because they are important because, uh, uh, like my I'm reading off here, my slide here, conserving our old towns. Uh, why? Because they're the memory and legacy of the past that shape our community. So the significance of shop houses, especially those 1900 shop houses, um, that we, 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 we still see them. Uh, it all started when uh, every town in Malaya that was developed during the mining and rubber boom, uh, we'll have at least two rows of shop house, houses fronting its main road that delineated the boundary of a city limit. You don't believe me, you take a drive to call, uh, now, now, now everybody can travel, uh, we can rent us state. Go, go drive through all those old towns. When you pass through old town, you will see two rows of shop houses. Be it is constructed with timber or, or, or brick. You will just see it as you come into any town, uh, any small town, uh, you will see it left and right. Uh, sometimes they may have one row, but seldom. Uh. So shop houses, uh, they, were the, they, they, they are actually the earliest typology uh, in, in the multi, uh, typology of a multi-usage building in Malaya. Those surviving ones, uh, in, in the bigger towns such as Popo, Ipoh, Stramban, Klang, Melaka, and many others uh, are now at least 100 years old, 100 years old at least. However, today they are being transformed in an overwhelming rate, especially in those bigger towns. That's why I, I, I would like to concentrate on, on, uh, on, on these shop houses here. This is a picture here is actually in Rao Pahang that I was taken before <laughs> uh, the MBO, before the pandemic, a beautiful place uh, in, in Rao Pahang. Those who have not been this amazing place. Okay, uh, this is Kuala Lumpur. The left picture is an area photo that we took in 2017, and that is what, five years ago? And then let's compare the shop houses, uh, the inventory of shop houses uh, from 1889. Okay, we look at 1889. Uh, one, one second, let me drink water, please. <laughs> In 1889, we already seen all these shop houses uh, built uh, in Kuala Lumpur nearby the around the confluence. Uh. Uh, as you can see, see this this map here. Oh, my cursor. Okay. So uh, on the to the north, to the north, uh, Java Street, Java Street, Batu Road, uh, uh, Jalan Ampang. The, the, this old shop houses, houses here, which is today, it corresponds. Uh, it corresponds to to this this area of the new photo, and then you will see. To the south, uh, it, it's more to the Chinatown area, Petaling Street area, which is uh, uh, down here. And then, of course, to, to Jalan Pudu, uh, to the east is Jalan Pudu and Ceras. Uh, uh, you don't see it 100%. So, uh, 1889, the map shows them the plane. Uh, and today, we are very fortunate. We still have quite a lot of them uh, standing. However, they are actually 
a lot of them are, are being transformed, uh, transformed. Uh, some into uh, uh, high-rise building, some changes uh, the facade, but definitely they had they 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 had they have been adapted uh, definitely because uh, the town keep growing, and then you 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 can see that if looking at this picture and looking at this this old map as well, uh, on the west side and uh, this I would call the white community. You don't see shop houses here. You only see the shop houses uh, wrapping on the north, east, and south. Uh, because this the white the, the white community is where the government offices are and, and today those buildings are still standing uh, beautifully on the side okay let's look at uh, how the, the the image of the old shop houses then this is the area uh, photograph uh, uh, south side uh, of the confluence 1932 um, look at the amount of shop houses that we, we still have but today a lot of them are gone uh, uh, I, I mean I understand we, we need you know we cannot save everything uh, we, we development needs to to, to go huh? um so this is some uh, this is the Pataling street here this is batu road here and this is jalan sultan in the 1960s so we can see a range huh, of Palumpo shop houses landscape and then uh i we were lucky we had opportunity to do a study on, on this ampang street huh? ampang street was a major street huh, in north of confluence with these old pictures, uh, historically, all shop houses in our community fronting streets in every town, including Kuala Lumpur. So this is this 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 is Ampang Street. Okay, um, I would like to highlight uh, to 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 my viewers, uh, uh, shop houses in those days, uh, they they were not built like current day. They like a block of of uh, twelve units uh, or fourteen units. Uh, uh, they they were built like maybe two, one, you know, pending on the on on the developer. Like for example, this 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 pictures this picture here, you can see ah uh, okay this maybe uh, what six eight units uh, they they all uh, this they 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 are same batch uh, they built together, um, and then they have this very cute little monitor roof uh, very interesting monitor roof, uh, and then after that you see there's a break, and then you see this batch uh, this, this are like say from this picture these are the older batch and then these are the newer ones uh, because the facade transform uh, the style and the trend, but. Then you see pockets of empty space. Huh? Okay, we compare to uh, after hundred years. Uh, 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 this picture is about nineteen ten, and then this this particular street street uh, uh, collage that we we did we 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 stitched them together is was was done in twenty nineteen. Okay, uh, we, we can see what happened to the the street skate, How how it changed and how it transformed, how it adapt. Huh? Um, look at the alphabet A. A, I got two A, just example. Th these are the earlier ones. Huh? These are very earlier ones. And then after that, uh, B, B is, 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 uh, yeah, B, actually these, these are Bs. Huh? This, this, this here are B. There was a fire. So later on, it was all rebuilt. In fact, B all the way huh? until, until, yeah, this is a whole block they rebuilt. So that's why you can see the, the facade, huh? it changes on huh? the trend. Huh? But this particular whole block, uh, they they are they are also those old uh, very old ones. Except D, I put a D here because this particular owner they demolished the whole uh, uh, facade of the old building and then they rebuild, they construct their own facade. They they construct their own design, a so called twenty century, late twenty century shop house. Huh? So after that they added uh, the the <laughs> the the high rise. I mean it's a hotel. So, so this is what's happening. Uh, the current trend, what's happening? Okay, so um, I like to share. I thought a certain thing, a certain important attributes of shop houses, I, I would like to share with the viewer. Uh, uh, th this is uh, uh, the Sungai. Actually, this this is a nineteen late nineteen twenties uh, Colombo shop house in Sungai Besi. Um, okay, we know the attribute of shop houses. Uh, the the kakilima, the kakilima, like like this picture here, the kakilima and the courtyard. Uh, these are the important features. Uh, the, the planning, uh, the planning of these shop, shop houses. Uh, that's how they plan. They're very green, natural ventilation, and then uh, they have this uh, 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 walkway, and and you, you, so so this, this is a collage you know, of those important significant uh, elements of these shop houses. In Sungai Besi, it was very interesting because they even have these uh, rainwater boots. Uh, they are made of cast iron. So it was a later age stage, not in the 1900. Uh, they, they made of cast iron. Uh, but their, their doors, the timber, they still have this timber latch door, uh, timber stairs. Uh, and then this beautiful corbel, uh, this is a real facade. You know? 
and then this this Chinese V roof tile uh, 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 was used, and then this jet roof. Huh? The, the, this roofing is different from the one in, in Kuala Lumpur downtown. So anyway, this is are the, these are the example of the attributes of shop houses. Uh, who, whoever is doing conservation or renovation to shop houses. So these are important features that we would like to keep them. And even the rear facade, I, I find that the rear facade of shop house, uh, houses are very, very interesting because you can see the courtyard. Uh, you can look at the courtyard and, and, and you see how they, they all have chimneys uh, uh, in those days. Uh, 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 those uh, 1900 ones, they don't have, but the after the 1920s, they all have chimneys. Uh, the window profile also changes. Uh, still came in, you know, uh, that kind of uh, uh, interesting elements uh, that I think uh, we should learn to appreciate them. So another important, another interesting element that uh, that that the feature of of, of this uh, nineteen of this uh, nineteen hundred uh, shop houses uh, are, are this this roof gable element uh, just just like the European architecture they will have this cresting uh, European architecture will also have a cresting on the roof where they they, they will line the whole line right um uh, uh, the decoration at the roof gable and 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 for for the Chinese architecture they will have have this Fire, this this woosing element actually this woosing element they are actually five elements of, of energy it, it is a if, if you want to google woosing element it's a very big topic huh? it talks about yin and yang but i'm not going to get into it okay uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to say to, to tell you that when you see buildings have all this gable it's because it represents the energy of the owner the the, the owner that lives in this house huh? for example Let's say in, in, in the Chinese astrology, uh, one person, a person is, is born the date of birth. They, they, it's also where it also comes, okay, for example, the date of birth you are born and, and some kind of feng shui calculation. And then they will tell you that, okay, you, you are born in this earth or fire or matter or earth huh, thing in, in, in your life. So let's say if you, if, if this, this um, for example, but you see this, this gable is fire and then this gable is wood example for example let's say okay now we look at this 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 thing here. elements of energy for example if if, if uh you, you you're, you're born the date of birth uh, it, it, it correlates with water then you want to have a wood uh, feature uh, on, on onto your roof gable because it water will feed feed uh wood but if you were to put fire, then it's disaster, right? Because fire, water is going to stop fire. So it, it doesn't complement each other. So if you were born, fire, uh, uh, your, 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 your date of birth correlates to fire, then you want to make, uh, you want to build a, a feature that sit, uh, a gable with the earth, huh? sorry, uh, earth the gable. Huh? So here, I mean, uh, water, fire, metal, wood, these are the five elements. So I find that this is very interesting. Like I said, uh, this also similar like the Western architecture, they have this uh, roof cresting as well. They're made of metal. Um, okay. So these are the things that we would like, we, we need to keep them and, and not, not just demolish them and put a new roof over it. Uh, this is a very important feature that I think we, we ought to be shared to the next generation. Uh. And this is in Penang. Uh, this is lovely, a very interesting happening uh, street. Uh. Um, in, in Penang. And then look what we have in Kuala Lumpur. This is just amazing. Uh, this view of them still left, but apparently I found that uh, the, 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 the roof gable in this particular street is uh, have this roof gable of this fire element. Eh? Um, probably the owner, uh, I, I know the owner, they own blocks and blocks of, uh, of these shop houses eh? in, in this, this uh, Jalan Tun HSD. So, so the 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 fire the roof gable is is fire and this 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 detail they are made of uh, terracotta. Huh? So when my when I saw this, you know, I quickly sent up a drone and take a picture and then we document it. It it, it was so rewarding. It, to me, it is a piece of art, huh? uh, a, a tangible art piece of art that I can touch. I can I can I can I I, I can sh share share the picture with everyone. Okay, and then we talk about brick here. Uh, brick, uh, in, in shop houses, brick is very important. I was talking about why uh, why uh, we, sh we should protect our brick wall. Uh. We shouldn't let them expose to weather for too long. Yeah, uh, I mean, 
like I said, I, I appreciate what the designers are doing, the trend. You know, it, it, they are beautiful, huh? So, so, but, uh, for example, you can see see the, the picture on the left. See, this is the column. Uh, this is brick uh, all stacked up uh, to make a column. They make the wall, the structure. So, so, so this brick, they are major building structure and finishes. Uh, example, the roof terracotta I showed you just now. Uh, tiles. Uh. So, so brick is the major building material for for uh, not only shop houses for all buildings uh, actually uh, uh, until reinforced concrete was uh, was introduced so when we do conservation uh, those bad plaster we, we need to remove them and we need to replace with new plaster and then while doing that we also need to repoint uh, those those uh, brick uh, the, the the loose those loose mortar I, I'm sure those buildings that uh, are exposed, uh, uh, where the plaster are, uh, are exposed right now to, to, to weather, uh, uh, I hope the, the owner will, 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 will do will point the, the, the brick uh, uh, every year, you know, check check at all the brick pointing so that water doesn't seep into the building. Because once water gets into your building, it's gonna the, the it's, it is it's going to to to, to break uh, break up the bricks, uh, and that's where the whole structure is gonna crumble down. Uh, bear in mind that. This is a load-bearing wall uh, system. It is, is it, every piece of brick uh, is, is the structure. So another important thing, um, a significant feature of, of shop houses, in fact, every building is our roof. Uh, our roof is very important because they are the first defense uh, of the of, of the environment, rain, sun. So in, in, in those 1900s uh, shop houses or even earlier, they were built with this Chinese uh, terracotta tiles. Uh, or we, uh, uh, and, and and this is a project that we, what we, we did was we took out the old roof tiles. Uh, a lot of them are broken, but when you when you take them down, uh, it has to be handled with care. So we took them down. Uh, these these are hundred years old. Uh. Uh, after this is in Java Street, uh, Jalan Tunpera, uh, exposed to to dust pollution. So they were all black color. As you can see, we washed them in the water. It's easy. You just wash them with soap. Uh. I soak them in water and then after that we dry them up and then we salvage them we can reuse them but but we we lost a lot of them we couldn't uh, use them all huh? so uh, this is a picture uh, we, we during the conservation we put them together um, these are the new the new ones huh? the new new v tiles so we we, we we put it on this this uh, bay because uh, it, it, this bay this is the, the staircase uh, where the landing staircase arrive to the, to the shop house so any maintenance of leakage huh? uh, so it can be assessed huh? so so the, the the finish of it then you will see you will see the the new and the old and in this picture so this is one of the project we did we reinstate the courtyard we change the roof huh? uh, so this building is already done ready to go uh, can it's going to easily uh, uh, stand stand in, in Jalan Tumpera uh, for the next 60 years easily hopefully 100 and then uh, another features uh, another feature two, uh, two important features that uh, I, I, that we see in shop house are those wet areas uh, uh, wet areas and yard uh, uh, in those days when when reinforced concrete was not available they were using terracotta to make their their, their terrace and, and those wet areas uh, they take yeah, and then it's all supported by timber and then some they will have this zinc yeah, zinc zinc floor so these are all wet areas where the toilet or kitchen uh, or uh, exposed to outside yeah. so when you see this terracotta please do not break them you can salvage them you can re you can you, you can repoint them you can change the broken ones we have conserved these floors and successfully done it and and the building is, is still standing after the conservation, uh, many in Penang, especially especially those uh, uh, beside shop houses, those government buildings, they are still they, they still have this kind of uh, flooring system. Okay, next thing is uh, uh, last thing is the paint. Uh, after we do conservation, we, we watertight the building, uh, cover the roof. Then comes to the paint. In the olden days, the building, the painting of the of the wall, the building, uh, they were. They, they were breathable, huh? the breathable material, breathable material which, is, which, which was lime at the time. But I think uh, over years, huh, like, huh, th this is, we scrape off huh, the paint. Huh? Many, many layers of paint, you can see this acrylic paint. So it, it, it's like a film, you know. So when the acrylic paint goes onto the, the brick, the, the, the wall plaster, it, it, 
it cannot breathe uh, it, because it's, it's equipping the oil base. Uh, so it, it, this material will cause harm to the historic building because it's not breathable. So you can see the layers. Um, every project of mine, I would take this kind of picture because uh, then I can compare. Every project will have different color shade uh, depending on the colors that the new, new owners paint on their building. The, uh, the, the basic layer is usually yellow, green, or blue. Huh? The, the, those are lime wash. And, 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 and further to that, then you see all sorts of colors. And it's, it's very interesting to get to keep to keep this kind of, keep all these paint debris. Huh? I would call it paint debris. Okay, so during one of the re removing of the old paint exercise, uh, we, 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 we found something very interesting was the signage. Huh? The signage uh, of, of, of found on the signage of the building facade. Huh? And, and you can see this a few Chinese character. And then you can see layers of this uh, 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 a sign, uh, uh, name uh, printed uh, on the beam of, of, of the building. So we quickly get someone who understands the Chinese calligraphy to trace them out, trace out uh, the character. And then we also document them. Uh, the Chinese character is like this. And then the alphabet is like that. So uh, at the end, we didn't put a new paint over this because if we were to put a new paint over this in future, the next conservation exercise, somebody may just scrape it off and, and may not may, may, may not be aware of this, this uh, 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 signage. Uh, I, I think this is also another form of mural uh, uh, that, that we found. So what we did was you can see this timber frame. We, uh, we put a timber frame over it and then we put a cement board and then after that we finished the paint. So these signages uh, are will we'll retain in the building for a long, long time. Yeah, oh yeah, by the way, these are the timber shutters. Huh? Uh, uh, those old windows, the, the original ones were aluminum, so we reinstate them back uh, to the timber, to the to original, because we are old pictures, they were timber shutters. So uh, uh, I must review that these timber shutters were actually made in Penang, not Kuala Lumpur. The contractor couldn't source the person who, who, who Sort the, the the carpenter to make this, but I, I, I in Colombo they are they are they they actually are so so anyway this was made in Penang, so I guess this is my last slide, uh, showing uh, the current conservation practice, the trend, and then uh, what is the art and science of conservation, and here's my conclusion, I love this little picture of shop house uh, in Singapore inside Jalan Sai Awi Road. This building is at least 150 or maybe up to 160 years old. Uh, uh, actually, the background are all high rises. Huh? So we, we, these are very small. They are I think 12 feet, a very narrow uh, building. But they, 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 they are still there and you can see they are tilted, you know, but they, they are still well kept, huh? uh, uh, preserved huh? uh, and, and, and very, very cute. Uh, typology. This of the very early typologies. We also have them in Kuala Lumpur, the fan shaped window, shutters, and, and, and only two windows. Huh? You go to you go to this uh, uh, Lebo Ampang area, you can still see them. Okay, I'd like to conclude uh, um, the conclusion of this theme. Uh, Ecomos is presenting uh, for, for this, uh, for the uh, Architects 2021. The legacies of the past is the memory of now and the present of the future, the legacies of the past in the memory of now and the, and the present of the future. It's our present or future. Think about the lost building arts and craftsmanship, the materials that we can no longer find, and the history of an old building represents. Some of those things just cannot be measured, but measuring it and therefore proving value uh, is what attracts people's attention. As such, the practice of conservation needs to be like, linked more closely with the public interest in the long-term environmental, social, economy, political, and sustainability of our community and cities. Okay, uh, that, this is my last slide. And then here's my thank you slide. That picture is an old shop house uh, in, in, in Kuala Lumpur. I'd like to, to end my presentation with this quote by Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. Uh, for those who do not know her, she was the first lady of uh, America, the wife of John F. Kennedy, was the, uh, the guy that was as assassinated. Eh? Onassis was because she married and then another husband 
Onassis. She said, if we don't care about our past, we cannot hope for the future. I care desperately about saving old buildings. It was then, you know, the first lady in her thoughts, huh? she, 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 she appreciates old building. Okay, I guess this is all I have. I would like to pass back um, my, the, the, the chair to Mr. President. Uh, thank you, everyone, for um, watching. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dati, for, the, for sharing with us today the intricacies of uh, sustaining historic site. Now, yeah, I noted at the very beginning an interesting uh, point that she made and when she shared with us that the root word for technology is actually the Greek word for art technique. It is uh, therefore surpri not surprising that technology has an artistic aspect to it. Science is not anathema to art. The two, science and art, are actually complementary. Conservation may take up to 16 consultants, as she point as she quote from, a, from one of her favorite authors, uh, 16 consultants from different disciplines. And Ecomos believes strongly that the multidisciplinary approach to conservation is absolutely necessary. She has shared with us some do's and don'ts and give us reasons for both. For example, street art. It needs to be more discerning. It should respect the architecture of the canvas that it was drawn on and not obliterate, remove all references to those details and architectural features uh, of the buildings of the, of, on which the mural was painted on. Her comments on conservation trends are actually part and parcel of an ongoing conversation. And she had noted that buildings and sites are evolving. Documentation and reinstatement possibilities are the absolute baseline consideration in sustaining uh, historic site development. And with that, I ask you all to put your virtual hands together in a, in a, in a note of thanks to Datin Jun and we will have to wave goodbye to you all now. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. For, for such a, yeah, a, a very good uh, a recap of, of my presentation. Uh, well said.